Thank you for participating in the Humane Summit, a virtual speaker series brought to you by the Humane Education Coalition. This session is sponsored by the Griffin Press and the Humane Society of the United States. We are grateful for your attendance today for Karen Purvis speaker session, Communicate with Strength, Key Words that Enhance Your Effectiveness. Karen is a sought after international speaker known for her energetic, inspiring and dynamic programs. Karen's goal is threefold, present useful material in an engaging way and to offer tools guaranteed to implement immediately. Karen earned a bachelor's degree in business administration and a master's degree in public policy. She spent eight years working in the animal advocacy field and also created a K-6 compassion curriculum which was tested in a pilot study. At this time, I will pass things over to our speaker, Karen Purvis. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Karen Purvis and I'm excited to offer this communication program for you. Today we're going to be talking about communicating more effectively, and that's going to be true whether you're in a classroom, whether you work for a nonprofit, whether you're on a board, it's going to be um, across the board communication effectiveness. And there can be a number of reasons um, that we communicate with another person, but generally speaking, we want to establish some sort of connection with that person. And also, some of the time we communicate, we want to get something uh, that you want. And so this is a way that we can communicate in a way that people feel more cooperative and want to work with you as opposed to feeling more defensive. So one of the things I study is something called interpersonal neurobiology, IPNB, and also something known as affective neuroscience. And what those big words mean is essentially, I look at research on how language affects particular areas of the brain. And there are things that we can um, now measure as far as functional MRI scans and PET scans to look at what is actually happening in the brain. So we're not just uh, guessing what's happening, but we can actually see results about how people are affected by language. So this is an actual neural pathway in your brain, for those of you who are science people. If you're not, I'll only spend a couple seconds on the slide. Um, but this is with the dendrites and the axons. And the reason I show this slide is um, when learning something just one time, we can change the neural pathway in our brain. It has to do with the plasticity of our brains. A lot of people think we have to do something 21 times or that sort of thing, um, but this pathway in our brain will actually change the first time we get new information. So we can rewire that circuitry of our brains. And what's important to note is here the emotional region of the brain that is activated when we experience rejection is in fact the same region that registers emotional responses to physical pain. So sometimes when people say no to us, or we're telling a student, or we're telling a colleague, um, that won't work, um, it's actually activating pain receptors in our brain. So it's not just something we don't like, it's actually having a physiological response. So not only do we feel this, the people we are communicating with feel this. I really like this slide. I won't be reading a lot of slides directly, but I really like this one. No matter, no matter how large or small, easy or difficult, each choice that we make, individually or collectively, alters the directions of our lives. And this is really the key to this program and the key to communication. And because we're human, we are going to uh, communicate in ineffective ways sometimes. And it's important to remember that if we get off path in a communication or we're having a difficult conversation with someone, that we can choose to get back on a constructive and positive path at any point. And even if we have momentary relationships with people, or decades long relationships with people. This is still the same. Um, all these interactions add up over time. 
So we want to say the same things in a different way. What's an example of that um, is in our communication, we want people to feel like this or like this or like this or like this. So we want them to feel very comfortable, connected, um, and understood. Okay, and oftentimes people forget what you say, people forget what you do, but people don't forget how you make them feel. And again, um, when, when people say uh, words don't hurt me, uh, that absolutely uh, generally isn't the case. Okay, um, this is a little bit of a, a pithy slide, but I wanted to include it because it's extremely accurate. Um, as far as using language, the frequency of your success is dazzling. Um, the importance is the way you structure your requests. Again, if you're a social worker, educator, um, you're in the classroom, you work at a nonprofit. Um, and to do this, it may not take any more than one correctly chosen word that engages these strong psycholo psychological principles that sets an automatic behavior tape rolling within us. So again, kind of a technical slide there, but I think it's very important to clarify what we're doing. So for example, uh, Disneyland workers are trained to say, when someone asks them, what time does Disneyland close? They learn to reply, the park is open until 8 p.m. So this is a simple example. If someone says, how late will you be in the office instead of, well, I'm leaving at five, you can say the same thing. You can say, I'll be here until five. And even if you're leaving a voicemail for someone and a lot of people will be playing phone tag and people will say, well, I'll only be here for another 20 minutes. You can still say, well, if you get this message, I'll be around for the next 20 minutes. Same stuff you can say in a different way. Okay. And one of the words people don't like to hear is can't. And um, there are rarely instances where this is true. Like I can't be in Las Vegas and be in San Antonio at the same time, that's technical. But many of the things that we say can't to actually aren't accurate. This is what it feels like with someone saying what they can't do for you. But we want people to feel like this, it's one example or this, or this, or this, depending on what type of animal person you are. So instead of focusing on the can't, we wanna focus on the can. If someone says, can you get that information to be by tomorrow? And let's just say you thought I can't get that to you tomorrow. You can say I can get that to you Friday. So you want to focus on what you can do. And it's also important not to say the word but. So instead of saying I can't do this, but I can do this, you want to take out the can't, take out the but, go straight to the can. Um, so yeah, I was actually thinking about this yesterday and I think that's a good example for you. Okay, an additional tip for people is some speakers will say, don't ever say the word no. But my research has shown that if you can respectfully and kindly say the word no to someone's request for something, that is an okay word to use. You know, no, I'm not available. No, that's not gonna work for us this afternoon. Um, no, I'm not authorized to do that. However, if you're not comfortable saying no, um, a fantastic alternative is actually. So you just skip the no. Instead of saying, if someone says, can you join us for our um, uh, office lunch? Instead of saying, no, I have a doctor's appointment, you could say, actually, I have a doctor's appointment. Um, instead of someone saying, no, are you available for such and such? And instead of saying no, you can say, actually, I'll be available at the end of the event. So 
This works in a number of contexts with family and professionals. So um, a great uh, idea to have in your uh, arsenal, so to speak. So one of the words I also recommend people not say is sorry. And a lot of people think this is surprising. And uh, what research shows, and I'm not sure if I kept my one slide here or the next one. So yeah, I'll uh, do this. Um, so is the dog sorry? Don't think so. The dog thought he got a new toy. And I have the concept of Kevin Bacon. Some people who are old enough uh, know the concept of six degrees of separation. You never know who you know know someone else. And so even if you're not able to help someone or you don't know the answer to something, generally speaking, if we still treat that person in a compassionate and kind way, it can help us build a relationship with them and for them to go on to other people to say, oh, I spoke with so-and-so and she was really cooperative. So what research shows is people will rank you as more intelligent and will remember your apology better if you add the words I'm and for. So instead of sorry, instead of sorry I was late to the meeting, you say I'm sorry for being late to the meeting. Instead of saying um, uh, another example, and one's not coming to mind right now, but instead of sorry it's too late, you could say, I'm sorry for not getting back to you in time. And this also works in emails. So instead of just sorry, uh, we wanna add the I'm sorry for. Okay. Another key word is, or couple of words, is I have to or I need to. And when we say these words, there is actually pressure on our carotid arteries pressure on our vascular system increases our heart rate. So we don't want to say I have to or I need to to ourselves, but even more importantly, we don't want to say that to others, to our students, to our clients. Um, and you say, you know what you have to do, you know what you need to do, and this rolls off our tongue. And each time you say that, you are actually slightly giving stress to that, um, to that other person unknowingly. And so instead of I have to or I need to, I encourage you to, to replace with any of these words, choose, want, get, glad, or I've got the word verb here. And what I mean by that is instead of I have to teach summer school this summer, you can say, I'm teaching summer school this summer. Instead of saying, I have to pick up the kids at daycare, I'm picking up the kids. Instead of, I have to go to the office, I'm going to the office. So we wanna take that have to or need to out of there and focus on the task at hand. The number one most important word in this program is this three-letter word, why. And when we say the word why, um, or when we hear the word why, or when we silently say a sentence that starts with the word why in our own minds, our amygdala is triggered, we feel a, a, a reaction, a physiological reaction, lower on the phylogenetic scale, so more reptilian, and we have this knee-jerk response of, um, of lack of cooperation or disagreement. So say the question is, um, why are we having this meeting? You can say, what are the reasons for this meeting? Um, and this, the, the, this is endless, and this could be in, in um, regular day-to-day -day life, running errands with the in-laws, um, but particularly in business to say like, why is this important to you? Uh, and you can be really well-intentioned, but we really wanna focus on 
What about this is important to you? Okay, I should or you should. Um, this is very common to say I should uh, understand this better by now or you should such and such, even if it's something simple, like you should come in an hour early to get that done. But unfortunately, should is another word that triggers our brain that causes people to be more defensive and reactionary. So people want options. So a great way of replacing the SH with a C. So letting people know, you know what you could do? You could come in an hour early. Or uh, you know what you could do? You could bring cupcakes to the event instead of chocolate chip cookies, whatever your uh, um, example is. But the should has a focus on the speaker and their decision and their idea. And could allows the um, receiver the other person to make their own decision. And when you use the word could, people are actually five times more likely to follow your suggestion than if you say should. So it can be a very helpful word to utilize. Okay, and a great one that people don't utilize enough, if someone's talking and they are explaining something uh, a new idea in the humane education field or movement or a new lesson plan or a new idea, instead of saying, oh, I know that's about you, so you can completely just change that to you're right, and the other person can feel uh, very mm, cared about and listened to. So as we close, I really want to emphasize that in my opinion, what could help countries, what could help classrooms, what could help families is really empathy. And a lot of times students or colleagues or even the public responding to your message might feel like you don't understand them. And a very simple forward formula for helping someone feel like you understand them is how blank for you. How difficult for you, how exciting for you, how frustrating for you. And if you're wrong, the person can correct you, but you're guessing, you're putting yourself in that person's shoes to have a more compassionate um, and empathetic response. And if four words is too much, we have a two word version. So how blank, how exciting, how difficult, um, uh, whatever works for you. So, and I like this phrase too, the words silent and listen have the same letters. So really thinking about how much you can be listening to other people instead of talking, we're talking today about talking, but part of that is also listening. So this is a reminder that each choice that we make, as we said earlier, each word that you say can really help establish those connections Again, be it with students, the public, uh, nonprofit membership, and really each word can make a difference and to focus on those individual choices you can make. I truly hope I gave you something useful today and thank you so much for your participation. This concludes our speaker session. Thank you so much for joining us. You can learn more here or by clicking the resource links in the summit. We hope you've enjoyed this speaker session and that you'll join us for another one soon. Please consider making a donation to the Humane Education Coalition to help us continue providing programs and events like the Humane Summit. We rely on your support to help create a more compassionate, just, and sustainable future through education. Visit hecoalition.org give to contribute today. Thanks again.